Right, we are here with Quan. <laughs> if I spell that correctly. Um, and he is in our shoulder rehab, injury rehab program, not because he's had surgery, but because he's had a fracture of his humerus. And how did you do that? Skiing. skiing. Another, another skiing accident. There's many skiing accidents falling on your shoulder. Um, and he's a good skier, but yeah, these things happen. He has fractured his humor, so he sent out a massive big fracture on the side. So he's landed on his shoulder and he's sliced off a piece of the humerus. But amazingly, he went straight into a sling and it's reattached and he had no surgery. It's remarkable. So that's really good. But with a fracture, what tends to happen because of the bleeding and the trauma, he has developed a little bit of a capsulitis. So when he came in, he had quite a lot of loss of range. And so the whole capsule, if you imagine the joint, the ball and the socket, the whole capsule is tightened up. So he's lost range everywhere. So with physio, because the fracture is healed, he's come in and it's healed, it was six weeks, six weeks. It is healed. He goes into our program, like obviously with no surgery, but he's had a long time of healing. So he can start early into the exercises but he is restricted by range. So we can't advance him until we get his range a little bit better, until he gets his range a little bit better. So with, if I show you with his left arm, because that's his good one, this is his normal range, right? He's got really good flexion, okay? His external rotation, you know, lovely, all right? So that's your normal external rotation. He's just past 90 degrees there. He's got full flexion, no problems, okay? There's no jamming, it's great. If you look at this one, when he comes up, now he's improved, he's been with us for a couple of weeks, so he's improved pretty well. But he gets to this point here, and it just sort of stops, okay? So what's happening is, he's running out of range in the joint, so the joint is getting jammed because the tightness of the capsule is holding him too stiffly. So when he comes up, instead of gliding through and the ball rolling through the socket and the scapula moving correctly, he's getting to the point where it just jams, and it just sort of blocks. Now if I push him any further, I'm just going to make him wince in his face. So if I push him too hard, he's going to squash his rotator cuff and all the soft tissues and jam them and get impingement. So he's got technically got impingement when we push him up there. So with this one, you know, we're getting him doing, you know, the pole, he's doing flexion, he's doing external rotation, he's doing the wall, he's doing all the exercises, but if he pushes this too hard to try and get range, if he, you know, gets in there and jams it, he's just jamming the joint. So He's got to work, and what we've been doing is working up to his limit. So getting him to work up to his limit, and as he works up to his limit, he'll find every week that limit increases a little bit more, and so he works on that. So it's very crucial at this point that if you've got this problem, you don't go and try and get as much range as you can out of it because it'll end up inflaming the joint and making things worse. Same with lateral rotation. Now, to get his flexion and his abduction, we need lateral rotation. Now, at the moment, when he's in abduction here, and this is the impingement position, he's got lateral rotation of about there. And you saw in his other shoulder here at about 90. So we need to get that full range before he even thinks about doing things overhead. And he needs this to get over his head anyway. Because as he rolls up, if he's blocked there, he'll just roll up through there. You see that he didn't like that. So we've got to make sure that he, when he does his exercise, he works in the range that's not sore. So his, like his circumduction type work needs to be in there. And the more exercises I do, the, the weeks that go on, the loser he will get. But I'm pretty sure he's got a bit of a capsulitis there. So my job is to stretch that out. So we've been working on going this way and loading him up, which he doesn't mind at all. So when I can load him up into there, put his ball back in the socket, stretch his, his capsule out, I'm taking him away from that impingement. So I can then rotate him back a little bit further now. You see that? Okay, whereas before, if he just does it by himself, he's not getting very far. So if I can glide him back, we can actually stretch. See that? I can actually stretch in the session. So this is how we're getting him more range, is by, you know, seeing the physio. So this is why we get people to check in with their physio and actually get some treatment during their program, especially post-surgical and post-fracture and post-dislocation is because they need a little bit of hands-on work to stretch out the joint and get that moving. You can see I'm working pretty hard here. <laughs>
but it's nice and safe for me to do this because he's not injured at the back there, okay? The fracture's healed. It's just soft tissue tightness. So the pain that he's getting is not from injury. It's not from damage. It's because his joint is getting jammed and his rotator cuff and bursts and soft tissues are getting jammed. And if he keeps hammering that, yeah, he will end up with another injury. But it's funny, the more we stretch him out, the better he gets. And which is great, it's awesome for his recovery. Um, so he's doing, he's doing quite well. Now, again, we'll get in here and stretch this out. Now, obviously, when you've had post-surgery, we go a little bit lighter. So I can get into him quite a bit because I'm not worried about any tissues that have been damaged. I'm not worried about any surgery that has happened. But he sort of... The joint behaves, the range behaves exactly like someone who's come out of a reconstruction rehab because he's lost all that range through range. So because he's got a capsulitis type sort of feel, it's exactly like someone who's had their joint tightened up um, by the surgeon and had some reconstructive surgery. So it's exactly the same. So it follows the same guideline, the same time frame as um, post-surgical would which is good we just keep him in a guideline he gets a bit frustrated because he wants to do like he's almost stronger than he is um than his mobility so he can do more he wants to do all the stuff but he hasn't got the range and if we let him just run free and go okay do all these things up here then he's going to start creating problems so he's still got to work down below height he's still got to work down here okay he can't come up in here because he doesn't have the range yet even though he's strong and he's not damaged in his rotator cuff he's not allowed to come up here until he gets the range okay otherwise he's just going he's going to jam it and he's going to go backwards and that's the frustrating thing about this is you've got to sort of behave yourself and stay in that time frame and things will get better so what we'll do is have a look at his range i'll show his movement problem range and why we we don't want to do things overhead just yet, especially in this week, um, because of what will happen to his joint and his rotator cuff if he does that. Yeah, that's looking good. Right, Juan, do you want to have a stand facing that way? Yeah. So, if we look at his movement here, if you can see me. So, Sam Stamp tall. I've seen that case right shoulder. And so what I want you to do is go forward and up for me, all the way to the top. Okay, and then slowly down for me. Good, way you go again. All the way up. Now, so you can see what's happening here. See, he's working really hard in his upper trap because his brain is trying to get his shoulder up because he's running out of range here. So you can see how this one's working way harder. And to get, and his shoulder blade is working not too bad. He still has to do all the shoulder exercises as far as scapular control and activation. Come down again for me. <laughs> but what happens is if his shoulder blade's here and his ball's here, all right, he's coming up, he just runs out of range. Now what's gonna happen, if he tries to go above his head all the time, he's gonna hit the roof of the shoulder and he's gonna cause impingement. And the only way he's gonna get high is he's just gonna force it and jam it to come up, okay? And he's gonna use this upper trap here to lift the shoulder up. If, he, if his brain wants to say, I want your hand to go higher, he's not gonna get it out of the joint because he doesn't have the range. So he's gonna jam the joint and he's just gonna lift his hand up by rotating his scapula. So if you go again for me, so from about there, he's hitting, he's jammed, all right? But this one isn't. So from that point, if you go up again, he's going to go jam, 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 all the way up. He keeps going high. He's just going to lift the shoulder blade, but he's not going to get the nice movement of the shoulder like he does on this one. And you can't see that, and, but he can certainly feel that. But you've got to understand, you know, what that feeling means and why when you get that feeling where you can't go and push it, especially put load through your arm. Otherwise, you're going to jam the joint and get more and more impingement. And so that range has to improve slowly over time. So eventually he can get, see that range there? Okay. So if you look at this one, come, let that one go down. Come up again for me, this one. So when he gets to about there, there's a shoulder blade there. He can get more range out of his joint. Okay. So he's got more range in his joint there. And his shoulder blade moves with his joint, which is what we want. Some people who are winging and have massive problems with their shoulder blade, their shoulder blade stays there and their joint, you can't get any more range out, all right? At least his shoulder blade is moving, which gets his range better, and obviously he needs thoracic range here as well, which we'll talk about later. But with this one up in here, he gets the point where 
he can't go any further. And if I try and pull him up, it just doesn't want to go. So he's not even letting go here. His brain's saying, don't go any further. So very important that we get range out of here slowly and not do things overhead or not do things above shoulder height until he's got enough range and until he passes the tests on that. Okay, but that's looking, yeah, it's on target and um, we'll see what he's like in the next stage.